Hey, third graders, welcome back. I want to point out to you on page 308A, remember this is the very beginning of our new unit where we have our family letter. There are some flashcards and I want to point out decompose to you today. We're going to kind of look at some, some rectangles that we're going to decompose. So if I flip my page over, I'm going to look at the back side of that card to get that definition. When we decompose something, think about using Legos, okay, and you've got a rectangle made out of Legos. This is to separate or break apart into smaller parts. And it's talking about um, a figure, like a geometric shape, or maybe a number that we can break apart into some smaller numbers that are more manageable. We've done that before already. We're going to do that with rectangles today. Okay, so to decompose means to, to break things apart into smaller more manageable pieces. Okay, we've already talked a little bit about perimeter, what that is. Perimeter is around the outside of our figure, right? And then the area is on the inside of our shape or our figure. So today, we're going to flip all the way over to page 314. 314. And we're going to look at some equations uh, that we can make using rectangles. The drawings are already done for us. We're going to use some multiplication today. Get that those cobwebs off if you haven't been practicing. Remember, you're going to be using multiplication on the M step and on all fourth grade math. So you want to make sure that you have those facts memorized. So let's look at page 314. And we're going to look at number six. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to write equations for each of these rectangles. But I want you to be looking. Okay, This one rectangle is broken apart into two different rectangles. And you can see that right there. Right, It's got a split down the middle there. And that's showing us two different shapes. Okay, So we've got instead of one big rectangle. Now we have two smaller ones. We're going to write an equation for each of those smaller rectangles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first highlight this rectangle and we're going to focus on that yellow one first. Okay, so if you remember when we're doing um, area, we want to write an equation to find the area on the inside. We're going to multiply those side lengths. Remember area is length times the width. So we're going to look at how long something is and how wide it is. And we're going to create an equation so that we can figure out the area of this shape. So if I look at these two side lengths, one side is four, the other side is three. So I'm going to multiply those sides together. I'm going to put that inside a parenthesis because there are actually two shapes that we're going to need to combine together. Okay, they're one and we are, we're decomposing. We're pulling this one big shape apart into two smaller shapes. Four and a three. So four times three Right? And then we're going to add that to the other side. And I'm going to highlight that one pink. Maybe you just want to shade one side and leave one side unshaded. That would be fine too. I find it's helpful if I show you with colors. Okay, so our next side, we know obviously right, that the opposite sides of a rectangle are the same. So I know this side is, is 4 as well. So I'm going to multiply. Right, four times five this time. Instead of four times three, I'm going to do four times five. And you might be thinking, I'm confused. I don't understand. Stick with me. We're going to do some more together. And once we finish this, you're going to see how it's connected when we start looking at shapes of rectangles when we don't know the side length. How do we figure that out? And how can we break that apart? So it'll all connect. You just have to be patient. Remember, you might not understand the first time we do it, and that's okay. But your job is to really focus and listen and try to be picturing right what we're doing together. So we've done the yellow rectangle four times three. Now we've done the pink rectangle, which is four times five. Right? You don't have to put the four there because it's already here. So you know that the side is four. Okay. So four times five. Now, that is the same thing. If we were to add those together, it would be the same thing 
as the whole big shape. Okay, so my one side length is four. But what is this side length? It's three and five. So what is three plus five? Right, that makes eight. So if this line were gone, this side length would be eight, right? Because three plus five more is eight. So I would multiply four, that's one side length, times eight, the other side length. Okay, and this will make sense in just a second when you see how these are the exact same amounts. We've got two little ones that we're putting together to create one big one. Four times three, I know that's 12. And I'm gonna add that to four times five. I know that's 20. So when I add 12 plus 20, think about what you get. I'm gonna add it over here on the side where I have some space to stack my ones on top of each other, my tens. When I add those together, I get 32, right? What is four times eight? Four groups of eight, that's 32. So I have one small rectangle plus another small rectangle. It equals my entire big rectangle. So here's what I'd like to do to kind of point that out. My four times three, right, is here. And I do it this way. So you can see the yellow one. My pink rectangle is here, right? And then if I were to have a third color or even just, um, gosh, I could just use a marker. I could use anything. I've got a green one that's going to show me four times eight, right, which is my entire rectangle. Okay, so four times eight is 32. So I've taken my two small ones and added them together to get the big rectangle. Okay, remember we're talking about area. We're looking at the amount on the inside of our figure. So I'm going to try one more like that. Okay, and then we're going to draw one and then we're gonna connect it all together, okay? So let's look down here. Let's try, why don't we just go ahead and do, let's do number eight, right underneath it, okay? One of my shapes, I'm gonna do the same thing, is yellow. Look at the side lengths of just my yellow shape. Three and three. So I'm gonna multiply three times three. Right now, I can just figure that out. I know that's nine. Now I'm going to look at my pink rectangle. Remember, I have just one big shape, and I'm breaking it apart into two smaller ones. There's my pink one. Okay, I want you to be thinking, what is the side lengths that you would multiply for the pink one? Oh, I hope you were thinking three times six. This line right here that's making up my pink rectangle is the same length, right? They're both three. Three times six is 18. So I'm going to add those together. Right? So remember, this is my yellow rectangle, my pink rectangle. So I need to get a new marker. And I want to figure out what is the area of the whole big rectangle. So the whole thing along the outside. I know that the side length is three. And I know that the side length here is a combination of these two numbers. It shows me right there, three plus six more. That would be nine. Okay, three times nine, I see a nine. I can use my, my nines trick with my finger, right? Three times nine, with my third finger down. Remember, one, two, three. I've got two tens and seven ones. Two tens and seven ones equal 27, okay? Let's add these numbers together to make sure it is 27. 18 plus nine more 
the double of 9 would be 18. I'm going to take one away. Look at that. So my two little ones add up to my big one. And I'm going to highlight my green equations right here so you can see how those match. Okay, now we're going to draw one. Okay, So let's scooch to the bottom of our page. Give ourselves some space. Okay. Let's work on, ooh, let's do this one, number 13. So we've got one rectangle that's going to be 4 times 6. So we're going to draw. We can, we can move over a little bit because we're not going to do this one. So I'm going to make a side length of 4. That's what I did right here. And a side length of 6. And I'm going to draw that rectangle. Okay, 4 and 6. 4 times 6 is 24, right? So if we were to multiply and figure out the area, the inside area is 24. Now we're going to add on this other rectangle. We're going to make it bigger. So we know that the side length is 4. We've already drawn that here, right? It's the same length. But we're going to draw a side length of 4 going across the top. Now look, if I made it the exact same length as this one, that would be too long, right? If this is 6, it needs to be smaller than that. So I don't want to make my line as big as the one I've already drawn. Okay, And if it's the same on both side lengths, you know that that's a square, right? So there is my side length of 4 right here and my other side length of 4. So I could add those together just like they did at the top. Right? So 4 times 4, that's a square number. Remember when both factors are the same, we multiply the factor by itself or times itself. That makes a square number because it makes the shape of a square. This area is 16. So now i got to figure out the entire shape. Here's a side length of 4. This is a side length of 10 because 4 and 6 make up 10, right? So I could even write the 10 on the opposite side. It's the same thing. I just used two different partners, right? I used a 6 and a 4 over here. I did the total on this side. It's the same exact length. Okay, 4 times 10 we know is 40. So when I add these two numbers together, it should equal 40, right? Because these two together would make up the whole big area. So let's check ourselves. 24, 16, look at that. We did it. Same exact idea. Here's our yellow one right there. Here's our pink one right there. And here's our entire shape that I'm outlining in green. Okay, so two little ones added together make one big one. Okay, the reason we're doing that we're going to see on the next page, we're going to look at finding side lengths, right? When they don't give us the side length, then we have to try to figure it out how this is going to help us. Because sometimes the numbers are too big, and we need to break them apart and make them smaller. Okay, so let's do something on page 315. I want you to write at the very top. It's a little sunny out today, so I've got a lot of light coming in my window. I want you to write at the top of page 315, right? A, that's area, equals length times width. And I want you to write P, that stands for perimeter. That equals add up all sides. Okay, so you write that down. You can pause the video to do that. And we're going to find some unknown side lengths in these rectangles. And I'm going to show you how we're going to break it apart, okay, and decompose it so that you can figure something out if it's a really big number and it's too hard. Break it down into something that's smaller and more manageable, okay? Here's a side length of 8. 
this side length is missing, right? There's a question mark there. We don't know what that is. It's unknown. But they tell us that the area is 72. So on the inside, it's 72 square centimeters. Okay, another way for writing square centimeters is to write centimeters, and you put that little two squared. We look, looked um, at that and learned about that when we were doing square numbers. Okay, so you can write square centimeters or centimeters squared. It's the same uh, label, means the same thing. It just looks a little different. If we know the area on the inside is 72, right, and we find the area by multiplying those side lengths, what's the opposite of multiplying? Right, it's dividing. We start with a big number and we divide. So we're going to figure out what 72 divided by 8 is. That's the unknown, right? It's going to give us this unknown side length. So if you count by 8s up to 72, or if you just already have them memorized, you're going to know that it's 9. So our missing side length is 9. Look at the label. The side lengths are not squared. Because remember, we talked about this could be just a piece of rope or a string. And if we were to cut it and then pull it apart and lay it out into a straight line, right, it would be one long length. So these are not squared. Our missing side length then is nine centimeters because nine times eight gets me 72. Okay, they gave us the area, so we were able to divide to find that missing side length. Look at the one over here. Still missing a side length, but this time they don't give us the area. So we don't know what's on the inside, but we do know the perimeter, right? And the perimeter is all the way around. Remember, you add up the sides to get the perimeter. So knowing what you know about rectangles, the opposite sides are the same length. We talked about that in our very first lesson of this unit. So if I know the opposite side is also 12 centimeters, right? So I've got two of my side lengths. I just have to figure out this one. If I know all the way around, I add up and it's 38, okay? I'm just going to subtract these two sides. So what is 12 plus 12 more? It's the easiest way to do it. 12 plus 12 more is 24. So I'm going to take 38 and I'm going to subtract the two side lengths that I already know, right? I could subtract 12 and then subtract another 12, but it's easier to do it as one group, okay? So I've got 38 and I'm going to take away 24. I've got 14 left, okay? So these two sides add up to 14, but I have two sides, right? So it's gonna be splitting this in half because half of it has to go here. The other half has to go on the other side. So my second step is to take what's left and divide it by my two sides. So if I have 14 and I'm dividing it in two, that's the double, you know that that's seven and I have to put my label on there. So this side would be seven, and this side would be seven, all right? We're not gonna put 14 on one side because then we would have to put 14 on the other side. And when we add all of those numbers up, we would not get 38. So I have 12 and seven, 12 and seven. Let's add those four sides up. What I like to do is do the double and the double add them together. So I'm going to check myself. I'm going to put a check mark here, right? 12 plus 12, I know is 24. 7 plus 7, I know is 14. And I'm going to check myself. And if you don't check yourself, then you're not investing in yourself. There's no excuse not to make sure that you've done your math correctly. Okay, you know how to check it. You need to take the extra time and do that. Here's 38. That's what they told me the perimeter was, so I know that when I add up all four sides, I'm going to get 38, okay? So my missing side length is 7 
centimeters. And maybe I put that question mark over here too. Okay, so remember, when we have the area, we're going to divide to find the missing side length. When we have the perimeter given to us, right, we're going to have to do some subtracting and some dividing at the same time. Okay, let's look at number 18. The perimeter is 72. It's telling me one of the side lengths is 30. That's a really big number, right? A really big number. What if I took this rectangle and I split it into two pieces, right? What numbers could I make that add up to 30? What if I did a 10 and a 20, right? 10 plus 20 makes 30. So I could even take apart my big rectangle, right? And make this side length 10, this side length 20, right? And maybe I could figure it out that way. Same thing over here, right? Or even with my 12, I could have done uh, partners of 10 and two. And you're gonna see when you have really big shapes, how you can take the shape apart and break it down into smaller pieces. Okay, because you not, might not know how to multiply something times 30, right? Maybe you're trying to find the area. I don't know how to multiply something times 30, but I know how to multiply times 10. Okay, so you want to be thinking, how can I break things apart into smaller pieces if I need to? If you don't need to, then don't do it. But if you do, then you have a strategy that you can use. Okay. Remember, when you're given the area, you're going to divide to find that missing side length. When you're given the perimeter, right, you're going to have to figure out how to add up all those sides. And you know that the opposite sides of a rectangle are the same length. So just because they give you one number doesn't mean you can't figure out the other side, right, and do some subtraction there and some division at the same time. Okay, we're going to do one more. Look at number 19. The area is 63 square centimeters. When I see that square, that tells me that's on the inside, right? I should know that because I've heard that a lot in third grade. So if I've got 63 and one of my side lengths is seven, I'm going to divide to find my other side length, right? So I'm going to divide 63 divided by seven, and that's going to give me my missing side length. Okay, so think about, I count by sevens up to 63. How many times do I have to do that? Those of you who've been practicing know that nine times seven equals 63. So your missing side length is nine centimeters. So my question mark, my missing number, my unknown is nine centimeters. Okay, so this side would be nine. This side would be nine. And this side would be seven. These opposite sides are the same. So we could figure out the perimeter on this one, right, by adding up all the sides. Okay? So use your math journal to help you when you do homework, right? Take good notes, follow along, and then when you have to do something on your own, you've got information that you can use. Okay? So make sure. You're not just writing it down, but you're paying attention and, and following along as we solve these problems.